from the Bible, from the Word of God. There are so many uh, commentary and teachings that are going on. There are a uh, lot of um, you know, ideas that are going on. Jesus speaking, he says, if anyone is not from the Bible, is not of God. It does not matter who is speaking. It does not matter who is saying it. It does not matter what the person is saying. It does not matter the revelation of the prophecy the person claims. If it does not run with the word of God, it's not of God. And so, uh, in a time like this, we have to be careful because as Christians, we no longer have time to study and read the word of God. We are depending on what somebody says. This prophet said this. My father in the Lord said this. There's nothing wrong and listen to the prophets of God. There's nothing wrong having a mentor you look up to. I have people I look up to. I uh, call them from time to time and I learn from them. But whatever they say to me should be compared with what the Bible says. The Bible is the final authority of anything in this world and even in the world to come. So, but it's a pity that as body of Christ and as believers, we no longer have time for the word of God. We would rather listen to what the prophet is saying. And even if the prophet is misguided, we don't know because we have showed out that what is a prophet, he cannot be wrong. What is my pastor, he cannot be wrong. What is my teacher, he cannot be wrong. Once, you know, he is my spiritual mentor. Everything he says is right. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the, the fellow believers, they were better than the Corinthians because every time the word of God comes, they go back to make research, to compare it with the Bible. Is it what the Bible says? 
I will never forget the, uh, the, the great man of God I am so much in love with Dr. Kassida. When the issue of uh, homosexual and gay and lesbian came up newly, it was going on debate in our nation. And our beloved father in the Lord, uh, uh, Bishop uh, Tutu, was airing his view. And when Dr. Kassida was asked on the uh, uh, radio, live radio, what do you say about uh, homosexual? Dr. Kavita said, this is what the Bible said. This is what the book of Romans says. It is a sin. And people begin to attack him and say, but Bishop Tutu has given his uh, go ahead that it is okay. Dr. Kavita of uh, AFM uh, uh, said, no, Bishop Tutu, I respect him, but whatever he says that is not in the Bible, it's not from God. It doesn't matter whether he's called a bishop or whatever. Whatever Bishop Tutu is saying must be in line with what the Bible says. And a lot of people were offended. And he said to them, I have no apology. I love the bishop. I respect him. But he is not a final authority. The final authority is the word of God. I love that man for that. And so we should be able to be grounded in the Lord so that we are not, the Bible says we are not move around with every wind of doctrine. That is why because people do not know the word of God, when your pastor say eat grass, you go and eat grass. When your pastor say eat rice, you go and eat rice. And you don't ask yourself, does the pastor eat that in the Sunday meeting to eat? When the pastor say open your mouth, let me put doom or shatters or red in your mouth. You open your mouth. You don't ask yourself, does the pastor do the same thing? When the pastor said, let's meet, I'm going to uh, bite you uh, by the river. You don't ask yourself, does somebody else go and bite the pastor's wife? So, because we, are, we don't have time for the word of God. Whatever anybody says, we believe it. And that is not how to be a, a, a solid Christian. Listen to your bishop, listen to your apostles, listen to your prophets, listen to all the people who are speaking that to you. Go back and compare it with the scripture. What does the Bible say? For the Bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. If the Bible does not support it, it doesn't matter whether it's the Pope or the Bishop or whoever that is saying it. The Bible is the final authority. Amen. 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 We're going to start with Antichrist. You've been hearing the word Antichrist. What is the meaning of of Antichrist in your own understanding. I'm going to uh, use the people in my, in my online who are with me uh, physically to get some questions answered. Yes, brothers, sisters, what is your view? What do you think? Does anybody have an answer? What is Antichrist in your understanding? I think uh, Antichrist is. Uh, are things of the world that are against what we believe as Christians, things that are against our standing and our state as, as children of God. So it is almost the, the representation of what the devil stands for. So Antichrist is, is, the, is just a, a, a coming and a representation of the, of the, the devil, uh, coming against what we believe as stand for as uh, Christians. Okay, any other definition, Antichrist? Is there another person have another understanding of Antichrist? Yes, sir? Okay, Antichrist, he has said it all. Just like the word is Antichrist. Anything that does not portray Christ, the belief against Christ, the teachings against Christ, what we believe as Christians, any teaching, any belief that is not in line with what you believe, is not of Christ. And so it is anti-Christ. Amen. 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 Let's uh, quickly go to our Bible, to 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 uh, to 27, our first reading. 
first job shopping to the Christmas tree of the Lamb. Okay. Dear children, this is the last hour. This is the last hour? And as you have heard, mm -hmm. the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have, have come. Even now, many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. That's how we know it's the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they uh -huh. would have remained with us. Uh -huh. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you do know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you, you do know it, and because you know lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, mm. denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it, if it does, you are you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what has this is what he promised us in eternal life. I am writing this thing to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. Mm. To the As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not you do not need anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about his all things, and all and as that anointing is in you. No counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remains in you. Amen. 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 From our reading, because anytime we talk of Antichrist, we're only focusing on the beast, the man who is going to come to uh, take over as Christ. That is only the thing we look at Antichrist. So from the scripture what we read now, Antichrist can be false prophets. Antichrist can be uh, pastors. Antichrist can be teachers, people who have known the truth. But along the line, they started practicing other things. The Bible called them Antichrist. They started with us, but they could not continue because their teachings were contradicting. Amen. Mm -hmm. We believe the same thing, but now we no longer believe the same thing. They are now attacking the gospel they believe. You know, many times I will say, somebody will ask you, does the Bible really say? Did God say? So, uh, any teacher who now begins to doubt the word of God, Paul said, if somebody built in another uh, foundation, rather than the one Christ has built, is an antichrist. Yes, there is a man who is going to come to oppress the whole world, but his teachers, those who are working with him, there is not only one antichrist. We only know of one antichrist and we focus on him, the man of the beast. But there are workers of iniquities who are working with him. The Bible described them as antichrist. He said they have already gone into the world. Those are the ones who are confusing people now that, you know, you people begin to live their uh, pattern of life according to what the man says, not according to what the word of God says. Because somebody will ask you to eat grass. Where did he get it in the Bible? So he's an antichrist. But many people do it because the man of God or the teacher or the prophet, whatever they uh, call him, has asked them to do so. So from our first scripture, antichrist is already in the world. All the false teachers, all the false prophets, all the people who does a uh, miracle even in the name of God to draw the people to themselves. The Bible described them as Antichrist. I said, it's possible they began with us, but they could not continue because what they are teaching is wrong from what we believe. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Read second, uh, first John 4, 1 to 6. First John 4. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe every spirit. But test the spirit. To see but test the spirit. To see whether they are from God. Whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Thank you. 
This is how you recognize the seeds of God. Mm. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. These years children are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. In the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world. And the world listens to them. Mm. They are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God never listens to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Amen. 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 The spirit of Antichrist has already gone into the world. Hallelujah. Amen. It has already gone into the world. And they have marked out their false teachers. And the Bible says that anyone who does not believe that Christ is of the flesh or came into the world by a virgin Mary, he says such a person is an Antichrist. We are still establishing what is an Antichrist and who is or who is an Antichrist. Uh, Second John chapter seven. Your last reading, brother. Second John chapter seven. Yes, sir. I say this. I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ are coming in the flesh, have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you getting the point here? The all these scriptures are saying the same thing. They are deceivers. Paul speaking, he said, Demas have forsaken me, having loved the present world more than the world to come. Hallelujah. Amen. They are deceivers. They, 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 they go, they pretend to be believers. They pretend to be Christians. They are, what is their aim? To deceive. The Bible said, Jesus speaking, said, if it is possible, they will deceive the very elect. They will deceive the people of God. And that is why today it is a challenge because many people who call on the name of the Lord are not from the Lord. They do not know the Lord, even though they confess the Lord. How do we know them? Because they do not stand by what the Bible says. Their teachings are from their own philosophy, their own doctrine of men. Whatever they thought and imagined that this is right, they go ahead to do it. They go ahead to teach such things. And they no longer uh, uh, say, what does the Bible say? They rather say, this is what I feel. The, the, the Bible should not, the, the Christians should not live by feeling. The Bible says, as men are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And the Spirit of God cannot lead you contrary to the Bible. The Spirit of God cannot ask you to do anything that is not in accordance with the Word of God. So he said that the, the deceivers, they have gone out of the world. They want to make disciples. They want to draw souls to the kingdom of heaven. So they come in form of Christians. They come in form of pastors. They come in form of prophets. They come in form of bishops and apostles. And what is their aim? To deceive. They are antichrists. And how do we know them? They do not believe what we believe. They do not go with what the Bible says. They have their own understanding. What they feel. What we think. And they are easily accepted by the public because they have sweet tongues to confuse people. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is a little we we'll talk about Antichrist today. The Bible tells us about perilous time. What is perilous time? Second Timothy chapter three. Let's see what is perilous time. Second Timothy chapter three. Yes, sir. But mark this. Mark this. There Notice. Will, there will be terrible times in the last. There will be terrible time in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. People lovers. will be lovers of themselves. Perilous time, hard time, difficult time. That is the time we are finding ourselves. And the Bible says, when the perilous time comes, we should notice it, we should mark it. These are the signs we will see. 
to show us that we are in perilous times. We are in a difficult times. Now listen to what are the difficult times, what are the perilous times. Yes, ma'am. People will be lovers of themselves. People will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Yes. Boastful. Yes. Proud. Yes. Abusive. Yes. Obedient to their parents. Mm -hmm. Ungrateful. Mm -hmm. Unholy. Mm -hmm. Three. Without love. Unforgiving. Mm -hmm. Slanderers. Mm -hmm. Without self control. Mm -hmm. Brutal. Not lovers of good. Mm -hmm. Treacherous. Rash. Mm -hmm. Conceited. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Mm -hmm. Five. Having a form of godliness. Now listen to the others. Having a form of godliness. They denying the power from such turn away. Yes, ma'am. They will look like Christians. They will have a form of godliness. They can wear robes. They can wear these short clothes. They can wear those uh, things that uh, the Christian dumps have seen as a Christian code of dressing. They can dress in a very neat and clean way. They are having the form. Their dressing is okay. Their wearing of garment is okay. Their rings are okay. Their cross they are putting on their chain is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But they are denying the power. They are having the form of godliness. We are we have problems. Does it mean that when people put this clutch that they are not Christians? No. So it becomes confusing to ordinary person. Huh? He's wearing the shop robe. He's wearing good rings. He's wearing the cross. So you can wear the cross and you are genuine. And you can be wearing the cross and it is a makeup. Yes, ma'am. They are the kind who warm their way into homes mm -hmm. and gain control over gullible women mm -hmm. who are loaded down with sin mm -hmm. and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Mm -hmm. Always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. Eight, just as James and Jab Jabres oppressed Moses, mm -hmm. so also these teachers oppose the truth. Mm -hmm. They are men of depraved mind mm -hmm. who as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far because, as in this case of those men, their holy will will be clear to everyone. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. These men, they have craved into the church. They have come with doctrines of the lust of the flesh. And one of the areas the enemy gets the church today is through the women. They come with seducing spirit. The spirit of Jezebel. The demons of Jezebel. They come through it to, 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 to use these women who are open. They are open to receive the word. But these teachers will come and tell them it does not matter. And as I keep saying, anytime a Christian begins to ask you, where is it in the Bible? Show me where it is written. That Christian is already gone. Because the Bible said if everything was to be written, the whole world will not enter it. Now the Spirit of God bears us witness. When a Christian no longer lives by those things, you know, he begins to ask you, does the Bible really? You know the snake asks if did God say? Did God say? When a Christian begins to now ask, does the Bible really say? Know that that believer is already captured on perilous time. Quickly, sister. You, however, know all about my teaching, mm -hmm. my way of life, mm -hmm. my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, mm -hmm. persecution, mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Opium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, mm -hmm. yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Amen. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, we have this doctrine among believers that once you are saved, you can never have difficulties. Once you are saved, there can be never problem. Paul said, you know what I endure. You know my passion. You know what I suffer. He said, not only me, all those who will come to the Lord, 
All those who want to serve the Lord is going to have the same experience. Yes, ma'am. Quickly, that thing. While evil doers and mm -hmm. imposters will go from bad to worse, mm -hmm. even and being deceived. Mm -hmm. But as for you, continue in what you have learned mm -hmm. and what has become con con conceived of you, mm -hmm. because you know th those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation mm -hmm. through faith. Amen. 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 They say they are evil. The Bible said they are evil men and seducers. They will become more and more more evil people. It will become a normal norms. You know we have this wrong adage: the fish that is in the river can never deny water. It becomes as if it is a normal principle. My my mom used to tell me in those days. She said the way you take this bag, you take it too too strong. It's not really like that. Lower it. It's not God is not going to I say no mama the Bible say he, he will. Show me where the one you're quoting from comes from. Hallelujah. The Bible said that they will wash stronger and stronger. They'll be more popular than the people who have the truth. Yes ma'am. He said and uh, that Timothy from a child has been able to know the, the gospel which is being preached to him. And in verse 16 and 17, what does it say? All scriptures? All scripture is God breathed mm -hmm. and is useful for teaching, mm -hmm. rebuking, correcting, and mm -hmm. training in righteousness, mm -hmm. so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Amen. All scriptures are given and is given to us so that we may be we may be corrected. We know we live in a time. People don't want correction. <laughs> if you correct them, they don't come to church next Sunday. If you correct them, they say to you, Pastor, why are you talking to me? Like that. If you correct them, say, Brother, sister, this is a deal. will not help you. You become their enemy. That is the spirit of the last day. In the last day, the Bible says, these things are going to happen. Amen. Amen. Now that is about uh, perilous time. Perilous time from conclusion of where we have seen is that it's a hard time. It's a time of unsteadiness. It's a time where people will be running from one church to the other. You know the problem we have today? We are recycling the same people. There's no evangelism going on. If music ministers come to this church today, the people who are coming there are believers from another church. So when the music minister leaves and go to another church, they, they follow him. When a prophet comes to this church, they follow. We don't have believers who have been planted in the Lord, who go out now to win souls for Christ. What we are doing is that we take people from one church and move them to another church after two or three years. We keep recycling them. These people, they are baby Christians. They never come to the knowledge of the word of God. We may be growing in attendance. We may have people who are pumping into our church. Go and check. Most of them are coming from one church to the other. There's no one that says, no, the word of God was preached to me and I gave my life to Christ and I find myself in the church. Is that not telling you, no, my, I had an issue with my pastor. I have to leave the church or we have a misunderstanding or so something happened and I decided to, we keep recycling the same people. And this is what the word of God is warning us against. That religious time will come. People will not hear one uh, good doctrine. People will not want to hear. People will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. People will be self-centered. Anything that concerns them is only what they want to hear. Amen. 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 Now we have heard about the Antichrist. Like I said, Antichrist has come in different form and is coming but there is a particular man who is going to come as the chief antichrist. That is the only focus we have. We're going to look at the mark of the beast according to the word of God. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 to 17. Who is reading for us? Revelation 13. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 to 17. Yes. It also falls all people, great and small, mm. rich and poor, mm. 
freed and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or their forehead. Mm. 17. So that, they, so that they could not buy or sell, mm. and yet they have the mark, mm. which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. Amen. 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 Six, six, six. The mark of the beast. The Antichrist will come to give this number so that they can be able to trade or uh, be able to buy or to sell. And whoever does not have that mark will not be able to trade. That is the mark of the beast. The number triple six is the mark of the enemy which he is going to give to people who will be willing to follow him. And if you don't follow him, you will not be able to uh, get that number. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat say, And they consider all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And then no man might buy or sell, save he had, the, had that mark. And on the name of the beast or the number of his name. Hearing his wisdom, let him that have understanding cast in the number of the beast. For it is in the number of a man, and his number is six hundred uh, three score and six, which is six hundred and sixty-six. Six, six, six is the mark of the beast. Is the mark of the antichrist. Anybody who receives this mark is doomed forever. If you don't have this mark, you cannot be able to buy. You cannot be able to sell. You cannot be able to trade. You have to have the mark. It's a symbol that will bring the whole world together under control. But as we will see next week, the rapture should have taken place. The rapture must take place first. The believers have gone before this mark of the beast will be given. Those who will receive this mark is after the rapture has taken place. And the Bible tells us that those who refuse the mark, they will be killed. They, they will buy their salvation with their own blood. Amen. Amen. The believers have been taken away. Not every believer will be raptured. Some believers will not be taken away, will not be raptured because of sin. And so those believers who will not say, no, I'm sorry, I have missed the rapture, but I can't take this mark. They will be killed. They will be punished. They will be suffered. They cannot buy or sell. They can't do business unless you have the mark on your hand or on your forehead. And so those believers who will refuse that mark, they will be tortured. They will be killed. They will be martyred, like what happened in the early Christian days. They will show them. They will be killed. They will buy their salvation with their own blood. So the mark of the beast is coming after rapture, as we see in our next week lesson. It will not come before rapture. And is the Antichrist already in the world? Yes, because we are on the last age. The rapture, the cutting away, the taking away of the believers must first happen before the mark of the beast will be given to those who new world order to trade upon and to do business. First of Samuel chapter 4, verse 17. Who is there? First of Samuel 4, 17. First of Samuel chapter 4, verse 17. Yes, sir. It says, after that, Mm -hmm. We who are still alive and are left will be mm -hmm. caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. After what? If you read backward, he's talking about those who are dead in Christ. He said that Paul was consoling the Thessalonian brethren. He said, don't sorrow like unbelievers because we who are alive will not stop them. In fact, those who die in Christ will rise first. After they are right, 
we who are alive and remain in Christ will be cut off to meet them in the air. The dead in Christ will rise up first. In fact, the rapture is like it's going to occur in two phases. The dead in Christ will rise up. We who are alive, who have not died, but remain in Christ, will be cut off to meet them. We will meet them. They are not leaving us. We will meet them in the air so that we can go and be with the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 to 8. What does it say? Verse 1 to 8. Mm. Now, brothers and sisters, mm. about times and dates, mm. we do not need to write to you. About time and date, when this will happen, we don't need to write to you. Yes? Verse 2. Mm. We know very well. That we know very well. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. will come like a thief. It will come night. like a thief in the night. Verse 3. While people are saying mm. peace and safety, destruction will come on them. When people are saying peace and safety, if there's any time there's a talk of peace, if there's any time there's a talk in the United uh, Nations, if there's any time there's uh, a, a talk in AU and all other organizations, is now. There is too much war. There is too much suffering. There is too much problem and the world is presenting peace. Yes, sir. Destruction will come on them. Destruction will come. Is there any other time that there's much destruction than now we are in? The, the earthquakes, the COVID-19 that is very close to us is very destructive. We've lost many even medical doctors, nurses, professionals who are fighting this demon. Yes, sir. Suddenly, so mm. as labor pains on a pregnant woman, as a labor pain on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, but mm. you, brothers and sisters, mm. are not in darkness, Hallelujah. so that this day should surprise you like a thief. Mm. Verse 5, you are all children of the light Hallelujah. and children of the day. Amen. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, to it. Oh, verse 6. So then, let us not be like others mm. who are asleep, mm. but let us be awake and sober. Mm. Verse 7. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Hallelujah. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Hallelujah. Verse 8. But since we belong to the day, mm. let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul keep reminding us here. What is going to happen on the last day? The world will be asking for peace. But instead of peace to come, there will be, uh, uh, be destruction. There is no time the world has been destroyed like the time where we are in. Paul warned us that we should be sober, we should be vigilant. In Jesus speaking, he said, when the leaves are fading away. He's telling you that harvest time has come. He wanted us as Christians that we should be ready. He said, in such an hour as you do not think, the Son of Man will come. He says, it's like a thief who will come to your place forcefully to take what you have labored for. Suddenly, they cut away with everything you have. He says, it's like you, you should ask the women when they are in labor, especially when the child is about to come. He does not give notice. That's why some children are born in the storm, some are born by the gutter, some are born on the street, some are born in the market. The women will make cloth. Because once it is time for the baby to come, it's just like our Lord Jesus Christ. The parents came for census. <laughs> then it was time for Jesus to come. And they don't have any place. Only animal house. Many could uh, go down and squat and give birth. Women are giving birth in the camp. Once it is time for the child to come, the child does not ask you whether you are ready. The child comes. So Jesus Christ, uh, Paul described it. He said that's how the coming of the Lord will be. It will be by sudden. It will be, it will take the world on our way. But before his coming, the signs we will be seeing is what we are seeing now in the world that is happening around us. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, what does it say? Revelation 1, 1. 
the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. It must what? Surely. It must surely come to pass. And he said, and signi signify it by his angel unto his servant John. The book of Revelation are things that must come to pass. What we are witnessing in the world, despite the name it is being called, are the signs of the end of time. Amen. 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 And lastly, we are going to read Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, verse 30. Verse 30. Verse 31. Verse 30 says, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then, then, please listen, listen, please repeat, repeat again Matthew 24, verse 30. Verse 30. Then, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man mm -hmm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then all the peoples of the earth mm -hmm. will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds mm -hmm. of heaven mm -hmm. with power and great glory. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, mm -hmm. and they will gather his elect from four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You're still talking about the rapture. The coming, second coming of Christ. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet. That's the rapture. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Hallelujah. Amen. Rapture. The believers must leave this world as we begin to see in our next week lesson. We must leave this world. We are not going to experience the uh, destruction of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. We must leave this earth. Yes, the signs will be there. Like we are already experiencing the first prophets, the first teachers, the first pastors, they are already on earth. What is their work? The Bible says, if possible, to deceive the very elect. They are servants of Satan in form of the servants of Jesus Christ. That's why they are Antichrist. What is their work? If possible, to deceive the very elect. That you become confused and say, if my pastor can do this, why will I not do it? If my deacon can do this, why will I not do it? If that man they call bishop can do it, you see what we are seeing. Uh, they said the, every uh, there's no smoke uh, without fire, or there's no fire without smoke. What we are hearing of recent of the men of the color, uh, color the great servants of God all over the world is this happening some of them are believers who have fallen into sin but many of them were never believers but because they have the opportunity to mark the pulpit and speak to people we call them pastors and so as they begin to grow in their life they are real person begin to manifest and they bring reproach to the gospel of the God. These people are busy recruiting people to the kingdom of heaven, not to the kingdom of God. And it's difficult for people to know because they enter the name pastor, they enter the name bishop, they enter the name apostle, they enter the name Christian, they enter the name brother and sister. And because of that, it becomes difficult for people to differentiate. But it is more difficult because we do not cite the scripture. Jesus speaking, he says, cite the scripture. For they are the ones that testify of me. We do not have time to read what does the Bible say? What is God saying? We rather prefer what is a prophet saying than what is God saying. And there's no prophecy, there's no teaching 
that if he does not confirm with the word of God that is the word of God, is the word of man. Any teaching that does not walk in line with the word of God that contradicts the Bible is not the word of God. But because we are in the last days, we are lazy Christians. We don't read the word of God. We would rather read the magazines. We would rather watch soap operas. There's nothing wrong with it. But if we can spend five minutes in the word of God, in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the night. But we don't spend that. But we can spend even, some of us will be watching the television until the television start watching us. So we become baby Christians. We now depend on people. What did God say? Even when God has not said anything, because we have made them our gods, they will tell us whatever they like. And our faith will remain baby Christian, eating the poor, eating the flesh. We don't even eat flesh, we drink the milk. We've not gone to eating the flesh to talk of uh, eating the poor. And that's why when temptation comes our way, we fall woefully because we are not rooted in the Lord. We do not know the word of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We are expecting Jesus who is coming so soon. Who is coming so soon. Who is coming so soon. We are expecting Jesus who is coming so soon. Let everyone be mindful of himself. We are expecting Jesus who is coming so soon. Who is coming so soon? Who is coming so soon? We are expecting Jesus. Who is coming so soon? Let everyone be mindful of himself. Let us pray, wherever you are. Let's speak to the Lord individually on our own. What does the Bible say about Antichrist? Who is Antichrist? In what form is Antichrist coming? Is Antichrist already here? What does the Bible talk about the mark? What does the Bible talk about the beast? The mark 666. Will Christians receive this mark? How will this mark be given to people? What have I hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against you? For your word is sharper than two edges sword. You are a consuming fire. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for teaching, for instruction, for edification, so that the man of God will be prepared for every good work. So that the man of God will be prepared for rapture. So that the man of God will be ready for the second coming of Christ. Brother, we are going home. This world is not our own. How prepared are we? Thank you, Father. Help me, O God. Help my brother, help my sister. Help us as a church, O God. That we will not entertain us living the main purpose of the coming of Christ. Jesus speaking, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there you may also be. We give you glory and praise. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray for our church. That God will uphold our church. God has given us a place called Total Grant. That God will establish this place. He said, in this place will I give peace. That when men and women will run to 14 drinking bed, they will run into solution ground. Mm -hmm. Pray in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I go and pray for our church. So that's what worship said internationally. 14 drinking bed, the hill. The place of total ground. 
the place of total restoration, salvation, healing and prosperity. Oh Lord our God, Father, we dedicate this place to your name. But as men and women begin to come into this place, Father, there will be solution, there will be answer, there will be salvation, there will be healing and restoration, oh Lord. Thank you, Almighty Father. We pray for God. The Father, you will do a new thing in our lives. And uh, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. It's our year of greater height. Amen. Let's pray to the Lord to help us. Uh, press forward to the mark of the high calling of Christ in, in, in my life. That every one of us will stop being baby Christian. We will be focused. We will move forward to a greater height. Because what is ahead of us is greater than where we are coming from. Mm. What God wants to give us this year cannot be compared with over the years. Mm. And say, so God, help me in my year of greater height that I will remain focused. I will remain focused to your glory and praise. In the name of you. Father, we pray. And Father, you cause us to remain focused in our year of greater height. Paul speaking in Philippians 3 verse 14, he said, I pray forward. I press forward, cause also God, every man, every woman, every young boy, every young girl in this ministry, that we will move forward in the power of your glory. Thank you, Almighty Father. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure speaking to you live again. God bless you. Please, uh, we shall be uh, doing better with uh, coming uh, weeks to come. Don't forget, our family series is on Saturday. Join us by 10. We are beginning. And on Sunday, the same thing, we start our service by 10. By uh, half past 10, we hook up. Some people were not able to hook up with us last Sunday. The majority did. Let's hook up this coming Sunday. Amen. Amen. Um, I uh, also want to get feedback from all the centers. Please report to Pastor GKZ. We want the feedback of what happens on our different centers today. We want the pictures. Send the pictures to Pastor Ile Comfort so that we will see the people who are on our Bible study today and uh, subsequent ones that will be happening. Uh, to record your word again, the Mayor of Torebo and uh, Happy uh, uh, New Year once again. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, all the days of our life, we shall be with us. Amen. I shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. You shall not die. But we to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. We shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Let's not forget our prayer and fasting. We're going to kick off on the 17th to the 31st of January. Please, let's be in the spirit of uh, praying. Some people have already started. Let us be in the spirit as we do that. God bless you. Thank you. Good night. Hi, and welcome to our service. If you're new here, you may be wondering who we are and what this church is all about. Well, the heart of the matter is this. We're a group of people doing our best to love God and love those around us. One of the ways we express this love is through worship because our God is truly amazing. He created everything, great and small, and His love for us is incredible, powerful, and completely unconditional. We also spend time looking into His Word, the Bible, and receive practical teaching to guide us along His path in our everyday lives. But it doesn't end when the service is over. Throughout the week, we gather in groups to serve, pray, reach out to our community, and sometimes just to hang out and have fun. Life is full of challenges, and none of us are perfect. But we believe that's one of the reasons God has brought us together. We're all here to help and support each other through each step of life's journey, because nobody should have to travel alone. So thanks for joining us today. No matter who you are, we want you to know you are welcome. <laughs>